me great interest in the mechanics of the past stems from when I was like our Jack, you know, when I was quite a small boy going along the canal from Bolton to Bury and seeing the remains of all the old coal mines and cotton mill engine houses and some of them were actually still working. That's really why I've created all this lot here in my backyard and it, it's sort of a vain attempt to hang on to childhood memories, I suppose. I suppose you think that I'm here to actually knock this thing down, but there's so few of these things left uh, now that, you know, I'm here to preserve it. You know, we've just put 16 new iron bands round, you know, to preserve our industrial heritage. This is the Bancroft Mill Engine Trust, and up until 1978, there was a big weaving shed out the back, you know, and this is all that remains of it. The engine, the chimney and the boiler. And it's situated at Barn Oldswick on the Lancashire and Yorkshire border. They've turned it now into an industrial heritage centre where everybody can come and see the original mill engine in steam. There used to be loads of engines like this where I come from. Every coal mine and every spinning mill had one. But at last they've all gone now. This is the Bolton to Bury Canal. And as a small boy, I used to come along here with my father on my bicycle. And to me, it was quite an exciting world. You know, there were like coal mines and, and cotton mills and all sorts of wonderful things like incline railways. Really, really interesting stuff if you, if you like industrial archeology. span Like this crane here, the first time I saw it, it were almost complete. And now, of course, there's hardly anything left of it. You know, we've got all the brass on and chimney on it and the chain on it and everything. And what it used to do, the boats used to pull up here and, and they had boxes in full of coal. And the crane used to lift one out and swing round and drop it down into the paper mill. Britain was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. And although machinery like this is now sadly decaying, for more than 200 years we led the world in harnessing the power of coal, water and steam to drive the heavy machinery that made mass production possible. It's an era that I only saw the end of, but I wish I'd have seen more of it. It's only within the last 40 odd years that our great industries have disappeared. In the 60s, the skylines of Lancashire Mill Town still bristled with chimneys. And the view of Sheffield by night was something like Dante's Inferno, with the glow of the furnaces lighting the sky, and of rivers of glowing white hot molten steel flowing through the smoke. And as the mines, the mills and the factories and the steelworkses and the engineering works is closed, the demolition men moved in and the machinery that had made Britain the workshop of the world came under the wrecker's hammer. The scrap merchants became wealthy as they stripped the brass and anything else that was worth having from the engines. Those people didn't care about what was going on, but there were a few who realised that that it was all a bit tragic and that if something wasn't done about it there'd be nothing left to show for one of the most important parts of our history. People started to restore old engines and steam locomotive preservation societies began to appear. 30 miles an hour! <laughs> Thanks to the interest and dedication of these people a small part of our industrial story has been preserved for future generations. I'm 
off now on a tour of Britain in search of our industrial past and the people who've, who've restored a great deal of it to save it from the scrap man. And so future generations can see what a wonderful race Great Britain at one time was in, in the engineering field. My interest is mainly in steam, but the earliest form of power is one that's still with us. I went down to Shropshire to meet a man who's taken on a job in his back garden that's even bigger than anything I've got in mine. I was in a sad way. Yeah. Um, no machinery left. No. That no. had fallen down some years mm. ago and been sold yeah. for scrap. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter was... Lewis has spent the last 16 years restoring this windmill around the back of his house. I have to remember to take the ladder away each day. The windmill that Peter's restoring is a tower mill and the sails are attached to the cap at the top. Mm. Well, this is the bit that makes it face into the wind, eh? Yes, 24 yeah. hours a day, that goes round, keeps yeah. it facing the wind. Yeah, it's really carpentry on a grand scale, this, <laughs> isn't it? Aye. Great lumps of foot square and two mm. foot square and 18 inches square. <laughs> Aye. Yeah, and I believe you can disconnect it here and make it all go down by hand in That's right. case of disaster. You've got to have some means of coping if the fan yeah. goes wrong. So this is what we do. Mm. High technology. Mm. Well, it works. Necessity is the mother of invention. Put the handle on. Yeah. And off we go. Oh, roundabout job. Mm. Free tour. Yeah. See, the Majolly Miller up here in his smoke, you know, thunder and lightning and, and a Force 10 gale blow. Aye. Yeah. Tower mills aren't the only kind of windmill. My travels took me to East Anglia, where I found another type called the Pulse Mill. If you want to see a good example of a Pulse Mill, East Suffolk is the place to come. Right, the East Suffolk post mills were reputed to be amongst the best in the world. And here at Saxstead Green is a wonderful example of one. The fantail on the post mill is much lower and that's because it's not just the top that turns to face the sails into the wind, but the wall windmill. So with the post mill you can turn the wall building round and if you've not got any wind the corn grinding comes to an halt. Oh, Jonathan. Now then. Well, hello, Fred. <laughs> nice to see you. Oh, what's this operation you're performing at present? Well, the old mill has got what we call tail-winded. Yeah. Which it very rarely does. Yeah. And that means it wasn't facing the wind properly. Yeah. So we just have to get a little helping hand yeah. to get it into get the wind. It. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. How many, how many tonnes are you actually turning round with this handle? Well, I reckon it's uh, about 18 tonnes. Yeah, there's yeah. there's <laughs> about six tonnes of sails altogether, and yeah. two tonnes of stones mm. and the superstructure. Do, do you yeah. want to have a go? Yeah. I'll, You're uh, a strong chap. Quite fantastic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. In order to... It's quite easy, isn't it? Oh, really? yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. You'll be all right when you get to the next <laughs> parish. Yes. <laughs> you never get 10 mile an hour. This has got to be, really, one of the finest examples of corn grinding windmill technology. But, of course, for windmills, you need wind. <laughs> Water was a much more reliable source of power, and you can still see plenty of examples of working water mills around the country. Muncaster Mill is near Ravenglass in Cumbria, and the miller's wife, Pam, 